Well, the first thing that comes to mind, you know, I wasn't taken by the pilots. I was taken by the Kansas City Royals in that draft uh, after uh, I went AWOL with the Yankees. So the Yankees left me unprotected. Uh, protected. I went uh, and uh, the, the, the uh, Kansas City Royals, they took me in that draft. Uh, you know, I think I was a 10th pick or something in that draft. So. Um, but I didn't report because we had a, a major union uh, thing going on in, in that year, trying to get our pension uh, time from five years to four years. So um, I didn't report right away to Kansas City. I was, uh, you know, I held out with four other guys, three other guys. Uh, and when I finally did report uh, two weeks later to Kansas City spring training, Cedric Tallis, who I love, uh, he was a great guy, but he he got really mad. And he says, you know, we wanted you. You're you're our guy, and and uh, but he sent me out. He traded me to uh, Seattle for Pinella. So uh, and I didn't know uh, anything about Pinella, but you know. So I'm shipped off to uh, Seattle, and when I got picked up in Tempe to, to for the Mariner, I mean for the Pilots, um, the general manager picks me up at the airport. Not some other guy just you know schlopping around to pick me up he picked me up personally and told me that if i ever pull anything like that again uh with there with the pilots uh, i'll be shipped out as soon as possible so i started off on one of these things that uh i gotta be good i gotta have a great spring training uh i gotta uh you know i didn't I, mike hegan i knew because he was with me with the yankees and bouton of course um but basically i i was left uh out there knowing that i don't have a good spring i'm not going to be making this ball club so i did have a good spring if you look it up i think i hit six seven home runs uh pretty good and uh and and made the team and uh so when we hit seattle it was exciting for me because you know that's where i was born and raised you know i remember peeping through the fences to watch the seattle rainiers play when i was a kid as a what do you call those people gangs whatever they call them but it was uh so it was kind of fun um because my time with the Yankees was over, um, you know, with some of the stuff that I pulled. So I, I was I was really looking. Listen, I got I got to get my career back together. again. I got to start doing some things that make sense uh, and and uh, see if I can, uh, you know, gather up and, and make a nice career for myself. But we were in the service back in those days. So we had to go in. Uh, and I'm not complaining because, you know, it's better than going to Vietnam and getting your butt shut off. But I, I, I went and. Uh, you know, we had to do our, our duty. I, I started the reserves about two years previous to that with the Yankees. So we're going to miss, you know, 40, 50 games a year. Go, knowing that going in, a lot of clubs, they got they got to cover for you, you know. Uh, so sure enough, I'm, I'm with it. I'm excited being with the Seattle club. And again, just like I said, we had a crazy, beautiful, love them all group of guys. Uh, and I and I say it funny because we there were some great ball players but you know we were the mutes we were the unwanted so we were the cast off uh with this team and 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 we all knew it we all knew hey we either got to do something special here or our careers are over and uh with that said the, the nothing was left unsaid we 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 were crazy we absolutely enjoyed ourselves we Every road trip with a story, uh, like Bouton was uh, writing about, it was a story. Every home game, every time in the clubhouse, uh, you know, you got to drink more Budweiser with Schultz. Those are all true stories. I mean, th this is nothing uh, that uh, y you have to hide. Th this was true. And in fact, if you didn't drink, you weren't going to play. It was pretty much... <laughs> pretty much the mantra it going in our clubhouse you got to pound that Budweiser so you know that was kind of like the start of it yeah 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 um what was it like playing at six stadium because from what I've heard it it was hardly a state-of-the-art facility it was terrible I mean it, it was uh I didn't as a triple a time you know when i was a kid it, it, and, and you know watching the rain ears play and stuff it was it, you know we thought it was nice i mean you know god we're at seattle watching the rain ears play but as a big league ball player now after coming from yankee stadium and, and i mean come on it's it it was it was terrible and my father was a was a welder and he owned a, a bar a tavern in tacoma uh right there on uh on, on pacific avenue 
And um, so we we get, you know, he would work in the day of building these stands because they had to, uh, to get the franchise, they had to have 25,000 feet, a square, uh, I mean, seats to, to get the franchise. So my father's company was one of them that were in the stand, they're drilling, I mean, uh, welding and pounding and uh, during games the whole the whole summer. I mean, they never did finish. And my father never saw me play ball as a kid. He was working too much. My dad was a worker. and uh, But this was a time I'm in right field. My dad's crew is in right field stands welding these things during the ball game. Uh, and then when they would when they did quit, they'd go over on the uh, left uh, right field uh, stands uh, and, and, and I'll, I'll send them up a beer and hot dogs and whatever they needed and, and really enjoyed that. Uh, seeing my dad getting to see me for the first time. Uh, playing any sport so um, I mean that's just another thing you know I mean here we are uh, two people in the stands and uh, and and most of them were my family so it was it was crazy yeah it was it was a nut time so uh, aside from the the lack of seats what else did six stadium not have that other major league stadiums did how about water pressure how about uh, showers that worked how about a locker room that you could hang your clothes in? And, 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 and I mean, where do you want to start? It was, it was nothing. I mean, you, you, again, I, I keep bringing up the, any, any place, the Yankees, uh, Boston, who was an older ballpark, old as hell, but Boston, even Boston, had, they had a great, uh, uh, you know, uh, clubhouse. And, and there wasn't any place in the big leagues that didn't have a decent clubhouse except for us. Yeah, it, it was, uh, I swear to God, I think, uh, you know, with the, with a sewer coming up out of the ground <laughs> and, and just, you know, well, guys, we didn't win and we also can't take a shower tonight. So luckily for me, I was commuting from uh, Frosted, uh, uh yeah, where, where's that place? And I don't even know anymore in Tacoma. But I was living in Tacoma, and, and I and I would fur crash, and so I would I would get back in my car and go home and shower. It was, it was I mean, no, nah, it, it you can I, I even laugh about it because a lot of things keep coming up uh, over the years. You, you, this is a this is a, a serious uh, situation that we did uh, played. And I never laughed so hard in my life, uh, except uh, as playing for the Seattle Pilots. So with that in mind, when you were playing, did you get the sense that this is a team that is on very on a very slippery slope and could potentially, you know, not exist the following year? Not at first. At first, hell, I think we're in first place coming the first couple of weeks of the season. I think we were in first and we were kind of even laughing. I was like, God damn, we're going to come out here and win this thing. <laughs> you know, you always, as a as a major league ball player, you always think starting off the season, hey, you know, what the hell? We got a chance. We had Mentioner. We had Harper. We had we had Rich Rawlins. We had, I mean, we had some guys that could play a little bit. Um, and, 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 you know, so we all had that, God damn, guys, you know, we're we're we we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna win this thing. Well, we we weren't drinking enough to say that. Once we started realizing uh, after uh, when the big boys started coming from the East Coast, um, I mean, I think Frank Frank Howard uh, with Washington, I think he hit one still travel. They haven't found it yet. What was your reaction then when Seattle becomes Milwaukee and the team was sold? Well, you know, even before that, I, I will kind of go back before just before the season end, about a month before the season end, we uh, we we figured that uh, it was in the papers that we might not get paid. You know, the, there was in the papers that this this might not this might be going bankrupt and we might not get paid. So we were kind of like, oh, God, dang. All right. Now we're not even going to get paid. We can't take a shower. And, and we're not going to get paid now. So it was, um, yeah, it was just a, a nutty time. If I would have known that, what I know now, or what I knew right after that, I would have taken, and I'd never taken anything in my life from a ball club. I never took a hat, never took a top. Uh, forget about taking a uniform. Never, ever did I do that. But I wish I would have now because I would have been a zillionaire. Yeah, I, I would have I put everything in, because they didn't care. We, I hit the last home run. For the pilots, actually, the last two home runs. I hit one the night before, but we're sitting there pounding this Budweiser, 
and figuring, man, oh, God, you know, we still don't know what's going on. But outside, there was a bunch of uh, two big vans. You could hear them from our clubhouse. There were, you know, they're on. And people are uh, clubhouse. People are coming in. Get, get, get dressed. Get dressed. And they're taking everything they can possibly get their hands on, not cleaning, not even thinking of washing them, putting these big bins and taking them out to the van lines. So we're sitting there, and especially me, I wanted to enjoy this last mm -hmm. night because, uh, you know, I hit this home run and, and you know, I just savor the whole moment. And they wanted us out of there. So sure enough, we, we start to, what the hell is going on? I mean, they don't, we can't have a beer now. They, they're throwing everything in these bins. And sure enough, that's that night, they took away everything and took it, went down. I think they store uh, in these van lines, stayed in the place in Utah before they decided where they're going to go. And, and we saw it. Yeah. <laughs> it was nuts. So that's, that's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. So yeah. so when you look back on it, the one season, are you grateful that it happened or was it just too chaotic? No, I'm very grateful it happened. It, you know, first of all, it's it's a right now I, I've got, uh, you know, uh, I get more people um, asking about the Seattle Pilots than the Yankees. Um, and, and I mean, it's just uh, amazing how many people are interested in the uh, Seattle Pilots. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I think uh, I, I think right now, I mean, the, they did a, the Mariners did a nice thing for us a few years back um, uh, and brought us all up there. I don't hell, I don't even know if there's any of us left anymore, except for maybe a few. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, they, they brought us up and with our wives and everything and, and uh, did a nice thing, had to stay out in Bellevue and really was really was first class. So uh, uh, they're going to make a movie about this sometime, I think. I really do.